Kazumers, we are all Shamasimiot. We are all here to light each other's fire and to serve each other and, and, and bringing forth that light from within. And uh, this is this is such an amazing moment of the of the new moon and the solstice, the dark of the moon, the dark of the sun, and um, and Rachmiel yeah. coming back to life. Oh also. my goodness! I feel so much better Rachmiel, this week. Would you like to turn these two lights on? Oh, oh gonna... I guess so. But yes, yes, I'll turn this much on. much I'll better. Turn this on. It is a little hard to get around. You turn that one. Okay. Ta-da! Ooh, light. <laughs> More light. We already had light. So good to see everybody. Um, so this um, this kazoom is all about the, the exploration of what what God intoxication is. How do we you know how do we cultivate that? quality within us how do we manage it which because it is a very intense and maybe even dangerous energy that we want to be able to to master or, or at least surrender to um, so the, the 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 phrase that we're going to begin with that's in, that inspires uh, that's sending us from the song of songs says Haviani oh, come on Wait, yeah, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Heavy <laughs> honey. El Beitayai, and he brought me to the tavern, and his banner over me is love. love. Ooh, so, stake me out. <laughs> so, I was just, you know, I, you know, I know that this place of the tavern is a, is a, is a place that, that is spoken about in spiritual uh, literature, and, um, and I went, I, you know, just be, just a couple hours ago, I was sort of searching in some of the Sufi literature, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I found and I found this. Um, let's see, I found this writing by um, by Coleman Barks, who is one of the great uh, interpreters mm. of Rumi, yeah. and uh, he says in the, in the tavern are many wines, the wine of delight in color and form and taste, the wine of the intellect's agility, the fine port of stories and the cabernet of soul singing. Being human means entering this place where entrancing varieties of desire are served. The grape skin of ego breaks and the pouring begins. I like that part. Mm -hmm. The grape skin of ego breaks. Wow. And the pouring begins. So we so we we we, be, we become that that wine. And there is a kind of a loosening of the boundaries. So I want to start there and see if we can sort of take a step towards the tavern. Uh, and actually, we're not even the ones stepping. We are. We are brought. We are brought mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So, so all we need to do is surrender, and we are brought there. And uh, that to say that we are claimed by love. That you know, we are reminded that that's why we're here. Uh, so, and and uh, Rachmel has agreed to. This is one of my all-time favorite drumming things. I that I. Created. I just, I just have to drum. He has to drum. To. He wants to go to that tavern. Oh yeah, this yes. is the way. So everybody, want to go? Want to go? Yeah. <coughs> Happy. to the 
Coleman Barks goes on to teach that that fermentation is one of the oldest symbols uh, for human transformation. Mm -hmm. When grapes combine their juice and are closed up together for a time in a dark place, the results, he says, are spectacular. <laughs> this is what lets two drunks meet so that they don't know who is who. This is the, the holy confusion I always talk about. Pronouns no longer apply in the tavern's mind world of excited confusion and half-articulated wantings. And I just want to say that there's there's one there's one one place in that root where Rumi says, "Sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment. Sell your cleverness and buy bewilderment." bewilderment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I love that and and you know, and the, that it's but 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 I think the thing is can we surrender to that sense of bewilderment can we uh, can we glory in it because we're so conditioned for cleverness you know cleverness is how we try to impress each other and ourselves <laughs> but bewilderment is be, bewilderment is the place where we touch the divine because it's mm -hmm something that's so unknowable. So, um, so then Coleman Barks has a kind of a, a warning. He says, but after a time in the tavern, a point comes, a memory of elsewhere, a longing for the source, and the drunks must set off from the tavern and begin the return, the process of tshuva. And the Quran says, we are all returning. That is, that is our, what our spiritual life is about. It's about tshuva, about returning. And he says that the tavern is a kind of a glorious hell that human beings enjoy <laughs> and suffer and then push off from in their search for truth. Push, push off from in their search for truth. The tavern is a dangerous region where sometimes disguises are necessary, but never hide your heart. <laughs> Rumi urges, you know, keep open there. A breaking apart, a crying out in the street, 
begins in the tavern and the human soul turns to find its way home. So we go to the tavern, but it's not the final destination. It's the place where that grape skin of the ego could break and the pouring could begin. But then once we've come to that place of bewilderment, we turn to, um, to find our way home. So, um, so I wanted to do a couple of practices that I thought were really kind of my way of, you know, it's my, of that finding my way home. And um, this one is called uh, Encountering the Living God. And it's, you know, when, when I'm in that tavern and I touch that place of holy confusion, one, thing's be one thing becomes clear is that I don't want to settle for anything less mm -hmm. than the living God. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, it's like I, I'm not interested in religion that's going to tell me about something. I want to experience it myself. I want to, I want to know it directly. And, um, and getting in touch with that, you know, that, that, you know, those, the articulated wantings. This is the articulated wantings that we touch in that place of the tavern when the ego, uh, you know, the skin of the ego, what did, what did I say? The, the grape skin of yeah. ego breaks. Yeah. This is the, you know, when, when the pouring begins, I touch that place of longing in me and also a kind of insistence that what, what I'm looking for is the living God not an idea of God or a concept or something that I've inherited from my ancestors even, but, but a sense of, of, of tshuva, of direction, of being kind of sent on a journey of encounter with the living God. And that encounter happens right here, <clears throat> right now, wherever you are in your life. You don't have to go far. <laughs> so, uh, I thought you were starting. <laughs> I am going to start. I am going to start. So I just want just to take a moment to find that place, that thirst inside for the living God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Some let oh he i 
determination not to settle for anything less. And it's kind of what happened to me on my spiritual path as I um, experienced uh, Sufism, I experienced that sense of the living God, and I, I came back to my Judaism and said, why would I settle for anything less? <laughs> you know, why would I just, like, say prayers? You know, why would I, you know, when, when I, can, <clears throat> I can face that living God and let it, let that yeah. banner of love claim me. So um, sometimes when we, you know, we, when that, that, that tavern is a, is a dangerous place, that's what Coleman Barks says, it's a dangerous region. 
and um, because sometimes in life we're, we're kind of um, stripped of everything that we thought we knew and everything that we had and so it's a dangerous region and I was remembering a time in my life where I just felt like so broken things were not working out for me and I uh, I, I stepped outside in the middle of the night into the desert and I screamed at the top of my lungs. I screamed, what do you want from me? <laughs> and to my utter shock, I heard a voice inside me that said, everything. How else can you become a servant of the one? And I was just like, wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not what I expected. But, um, but it's exactly, it, it was exactly the, the path, uh, the, the, the way of, fi the, of finding my way home um, was that once I could kind of fall in love with the deepest essence you know, not with the just the forms of my life, but the deepest essence of aliveness. When I could fall in love in that way, then um, what what kind of bloomed inside with me was a sense that I need to ex I needed to express that love. I needed to express that love, or I would explode, really. <laughs> and uh, and so the way that I that we express love is through service, and uh, to give to giving ourselves. Uh, and we don't do it because we're just like nice people. <laughs> we do it because we're in love, and that love has to go someplace, or else yes. it'll, it'll just destroy us. You get that. It's, not, it's a powerful energy, you know? yeah. Gotta let it through. So, um, so this idea of service, I think, uh, becomes really important. But it's not, you know, it's not ultimately like me serving. It's just sort of allowing that love mm -hmm. to be expressed through me and whatever you, you know. And each of us has a, your, our own unique way of expressing that love in the world. In, in the world, but if we don't. It's very painful. It's, maybe if we do, it's painful too. <laughs> but if we don't express it, it's really hard. You know, it gets bottled up. It gets twisted in us. And so, just becoming that that pure channel. That like what it, what it, he said, the pouring, the pouring out, so the, the pouring through. Um, so, uh, so I wanted to. to to chant these words about about giving myself in service that um, is a, a really it's a really beautiful practice it says anaya which is please god ki ani avdecha because i am that's who i am i am your servant i'm here to be the channel of that mm. divine flow mm. that's who i am and um, and so it's sort of asking to be emptied out, to be poured through, to be uh, to be used well, and I think that's my greatest desire in life is to be well mm -hmm. used. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, as we chant this, we can sort of get in touch with that that sense of like surrendering to. Who we are, you know, who we who we are meant to be. Mm. Um, and um, and again, this is this is something that happens in the tavern. Mm -hmm. That surrender <coughs> that happens there. Let's see if we can we can turn in that tavern and and say that everything that pours m through me is, um, you know, that I need to get out of the way and to know myself as a, as a servant of the one.
of the one in a way we 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 give that freedom away to find it we become a servant of the one and um, Rav Cook uh, teaches that the that the core of freedom is to be loyal to our own our, our inner essence to the Telem Elohim, the, mm -hmm. the divine image that is within us. To be loyal to that divine image uh, is, um, you know, to find that essence within us and, uh, and, to, and to become, you know, a servant of that. Uh, to be, you know, to give mm -hmm. ourselves to it. Um, so because this, it feels so good. <laughs> It just feels so sometimes, good. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, if I'm, I'm from all the way out of the way. <laughs> when you're all the way out, all the way out of the way, then it feels good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to give this this teaching from um, Elia Delio. What a great name! Oh yeah, Elia Delio. Um, um, she says, "The more I am in union with another, the more I am myself." since the core of myself is the basis of union. I'll say that again. The more I am in union with another, the more I am myself, since the core of myself mm. is the basis of union. Mm. In this way, the unity of love is the radiance of personhood. To grow in love is to grow into my own identity as a person. It is to grow in freedom. Only in freedom can I be truly a person, a relational being, at home in the infinite ocean of God's love. And in this ocean of divine love, I am free. Hmm. Only in freedom can I be truly a person, a relational being, at home in the infinite ocean of God's love. And in this ocean of divine love, I am free. Hmm. And, um, there's something I read today from Thich Nhat Hanh that said that, that the, the kind of prerequisite for love is presence. We need to, to be able to, to you know, to, to cultivate presence before, you know, in order to love. Like if we're not there, we can't, we can't you know. Mm. Uh, but however much we can cultivate that presence, that's that, that, to that extent, um, we can love. So, um, so this, you know, uh, in, in my life, you know, I've had this path of like sort of saying, I am an ecstatic. I want to be on this path of God intoxication. And, uh, and over the years, it has sometimes been tricky to be on that path. And um, sometimes it scares people. That, that energy scares people mm -hmm. and you know and um, 
and I've had to sort of like figure out, oh, how do I, how do I stay on this path without scaring everyone away? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then other people are drawn to it for the wrong reasons because they want to dissociate, right? <laughs> um, they want to leave their bodies, and so, um, so it's. It's kind, of, it's kind of tricky sometimes, and what, uh, what has helped me to understand how to be on this path of God intoxication is um, something, it, it is the, the, the yin-yang symbol mm -hmm. that, ha that holds the opposites within it. And, the, and so what I realized was that that part of the, of the yin-yang of my ecstasy at the center of my ecstasy, I needed to find supreme sobriety, a kind of a contemplative stillness that is at the center of the, my ecstatic life. I needed to find that stillness at the center of it. And as I um, come into my stillness, I need to find at the center of my stillness that ecstasy, which is like the supreme aliveness, that spark of the divine, or else my that contemplative life is going to deaden me if I don't put that ecstasy at the center of my the, my my contemplation, my stillness. Yeah, and so. So I'm always working it with that. It's not exactly a balance. It's like, it's like, um, like planting the seed of ecstasy inside the center of my stillness, and planting the deep, calm, still center at the core of my ecstasy. Doesn't that sound good? That sounds mm -hmm. like a, I mean, uh, not a simple thing. But um, I think a worth a worthwhile model to be able to be working with. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So um, so so one of the the, the the place of God intoxication uh, it it um, depends on having a feeling that there is a fire at your core, which is that divine image that is within us, that Salam Elohim. And, uh, and especially here on Hanukkah, when we're, we're working with the fire, with the light, to be able to say, oh, I want that at, at the core of my being. I want that, that fire. Uh, so there, I, tell, I wanted to do one last practice um, that's called Fire on the Altar. And, uh, you know, when after the temple was destroyed, the altar of sacrifice came inside. And so whatever we read about the, you know, in Torah about the temple or about the Mishkan, about the sacrifices, um, you know, it gets trans, transmuted into the inner practice. And uh, so in the book of Leviticus, it says, it says the fire must always be kept burning on the altar. And by the way, don't let it go out. <laughs> Shall don't let it go out. And um, and so that's that's a kind of it's like an interesting uh, sacred phrase um, because you know why do you need to say don't let it? if it's if it's fires were kept burning why do you need to say it shouldn't shouldn't go out you know? But those are actually two parts of the same practice, and the practice is to be able to ask the question. What is it that keeps my fire burning? What is it that, that keeps me that that center of aliveness and, and deep joy that doesn't depend on circumstances? What is it that keeps it alive in me? How do I nurture that place of the Salam Elohim, that let light within? So that's that's one question. And then the other question is like, oh yeah, what puts it out? There are sort of some patterns that I have of like, you know, letting letting the you know the circumstances of life put out my fire, or letting certain people put out my fire, or letting certain you know situations put mm -hmm. out my fire, and that's not okay, I, you know. So this is an unconditional 
uh, commitment to the fire within. That's when we need it the most. In those when, the, when it's hard. When yeah, it's hard. When it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is a kind of a conversation with that each of us needs to have with our own um, inner ner tami, the eternal flame, to keep it burning. And so, um, so the chant that we'll do is a kind of a is the leading up to in in the silence, each of us asking those questions. Um, you know, what is it? And you might want to even find a little pen, pen and paper to write it down, or if you stay afterwards, you can share it with somebody um, to be able to say. And and I do this practice every once in a while, and, it, and the answers always change. Hmm. So what is it that I need to, you know, that what is my fire asking for? And um, how do I get kind of wise to my patterns of the fire going out, you know, so that I can um, can keep that keep that fire on the altar of my heart burning? So there's three parts to the chant, but we only have two mouths. Only two's. Two but, of us. <laughs> but we, you guys have lots of mouths, even though I can't hear them. So, but you can so you can choose which um, which part you want to do. So one part is just to, it's just expressing that eternal flame, and you, and it's like. <laughs> So that part sounds low. that eternal flame. Oh uh -huh. 
close your eyes, look at that flame inside you, that flame on the altar of your heart. And speak to that flame and say, what is it that you need to burn bright and clear? How can I take care of you, flame? How can I keep you going? What do you need? Just take a moment and listen for the answer. And then you might ask the flame the question of like, well, what is it that puts you out? I can be sort of like, I understand that pattern. What is it that puts you out, flame? So that flame is our aliveness. I see some people putting things in the putting things mm. into the chat. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to put what answers come in the in the chat, you can do that. And um, I just want to there's one one last uh, teaching from Rumi that says I I learned that every mortal will taste death but only some will taste life. <laughs> so it's that life uh, we want to want to taste, you want to savor, mm -hmm. want to uh, let it let it pour through that that space you have created for it. Yeah. So, um Attitude keeps my flame alive. Oh, yeah. Stress, anxiety Attitude, puts it out. Appreciation. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's an automatic. Forever. <laughs> so, I want to thank you all for your practice and to wish you a, a hug sameach. Uh, well, we, a hug, a hug, hug sameach. Sameach. Just like give a little hug <laughs> to everybody. Hug sameach here. And the Hanukkah, the annual Hanukkah hat wearing. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this is true. We, we, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to be, we'll be seeing you next week. And stop by the website, sign up for a retreat. Interest, you know, fun things happening. There's Listen a, to some hallelujahs. Oh, yeah, and there's some new hallelujahs happening on my on my website, too. Thank you to Aliyah for oh. posting them as soon as I send them to her. She is a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> the goddess Aliyah. <laughs> and, uh, and for those of you who would like to stay for 10 minutes to maybe share a little bit of reflection on your practice, we also want to send um, 